Hi, it's Tim from Toy Tinker Tim, and in another episode that I'm taking a look at some of the toys from the Mattel Major Matt Mason line here this episode, I'm working on a Firebolt Space Cannon. These were originally released back in 1968. This toy vehicle had motion, lights, and sound. It was very action-packed and actually quite loud. I'm sure many of parents at the time probably had some regret after purchasing this one for their kids. Uh, most of the product shots on packaging and inserts were of a prototype uh, type version. Um, it's very different from the finished version of the toy as far as the color. The rotating radar on top and the deck are shown in a silvery gray color plastic. And in production, they were molded in a brighter reddish-orange type color. The cool vintage toy had a pair of lesser cool vintage batteries uh, still tucked away inside of the battery compartment. Uh, the visible inside base of the terminals, I was relieved to see, hadn't been caked with corrosive battery rot. Uh, just some loose, crumbly corrosion in there and uh, that can be cleaned out pretty easily. The battery compartment lid at first glance looks pretty good as well, but there is a crack in the thin metal uh, terminals there from the vintage battery contact over the years. So I tried carefully to clean off the corrosive uh, bit there but the crack had become a paper thin area so it just quickly gave way so checking out how the parts are assembled in the lid there is some relief that it is a very basic inexpensive assembly process that they used here so in this case that's to our advantage to make a repair so the metal i'm using it's from this k and s precision metals and it's a uh, it's a five by six sheet. The thickness of it is uh, eight thousandths of an inch. Uh, 0 .008. Uh, the makeup of it is phosphor bronze. It's supposed to be a mix of copper with tin and phosphorus. Uh, I guess sometimes they call it a tin bronze. From what I've found, it's good for doing this kind of. Would be a good metal for this kind of a project here. The black on off switch here that attaches over a molded in tab uh, and that rests on top of the metal battery contacts strip. So I haven't attempted this type of repair before uh, but the assembly on the toy looks pretty straightforward and it's really a cool vintage space toy so it would really be a shame not to make the effort and uh, give it a try and share here what I get and what my process was to get there. So I'm using a pick tool to pull the tab down while I push up on the black plastic switch bar. I've popped this off before recording here because it really takes some pressure and I can't get a clear view of uh, what I'm doing otherwise. So after that's popped off it's pretty simple for the rest of the removal. My next step is making a paper template of that broken metal contact strip, uh, adding in allowing for that uh, missing section here, the section that broke off from the corrosion earlier. So I've taken my paper template that I made and spray mounted it onto the metal to make it a lot easier to cut it out. It's a good cutout guide. I used a larger pair of tin snips for bulk cutting and as I worked into the uh, tighter sections I used a small pair of snips. So I used some needle files and coarse sandpaper to remove these sharp edges. 
there's a slight crease down the center of this strip. So I'm going to put this into a vise and just give it a bit of a healthy nudge in there to recreate that bend. Putting in that bend uh, just enough, it's actually a pretty close copy working by eye. I put in a slight bend, uh, took it out and checked it and tried again. So it's better to go lightly than too much and have to try to bend it back again. Uh, now to recreate and get a little bit of that rounding on the outer ends of the terminals. I'm using a rounded dowel to try and put a gradual curve to the sections. Uh, I can use this as a starter shape at least and then just go back in by hand and tweak it a little bit more as I go if I need to. So what I'm calling a wooden dowel here, uh, this is a closet, the hanger rod, maybe you call it a closet pole, but it is a one and a quarter inch round. The end result, I think it's pretty good. It's uh, turned out nice for just fashioning it all by hand. Uh, getting the paper template material off was a bit of a hassle. Uh, the spray adhesive probably worked extra good. I used some uh, goof off adhesive remover to get it all to finally come off the metal strip. Putting it all back together now is a pretty quick, painless step. It's a lot easier than it is disassembly. Now that our power source is cleaned up and repaired, I'm taking a look at other electrical connections and functions on the Firebolt Space Cannon. There's some light co corrosion uh, with probably a light treatment of WD-40 will be put on there to help treat and clean that off. But I'm thinking the bulb in its uh, compartment could probably stand some cleaning after sitting so idle for all these years. It'll be a good way to brighten things up a bit, I believe. Although I struggle to remove the panel really because I'm doing it one-handed here uh, so I can keep the camera view on the action, but it's a pretty easily accessible design. Once open and batteries are in place, the bulb is making good contact and it's uh, able to tilt into the position. I can see a lot of dust and crumbs of uh, debris in the area from over the years, so I'll remove the bulb to clean it and the uh, compartment as well. There's no signs of rust, so I'll use the WD-40 on a cotton swab to reach in and uh, clean and treat the area and the metal, uh, the contacts around the bulb in its compartment. The bulb is a GE-222, and uh, I've cleaned it off, um, a lot of dust, some little light corrosion at the base, just used a pencil eraser there to get that off. And yes, you can still buy uh, replacement bulbs here um, online for this style and size. They're pretty inexpensive.
So I'm going to go on here and move on to the decals now. Uh, fortunately, like 95% of the original decals are here. Uh, but most have lost their adhesion uh, to the toy. Some are basically just kind of resting in place. Uh, there's no real effort needed to remove them. So as I go around removing the decals here, I'll also take that opportunity to give the toy a good thorough cleaning. I'll use some of the plastic polish as well to, uh, to bring back a more natural-like new appearance to the surface of the scratched and worn plastic parts. The main drive wheels and axle are grungy, but there's no heavy rust on the axle. Uh, however, one of the drive wheels has been used as a nesting spot for spiders, which if you've seen some of my other episodes, it's one of my least favorite things to encounter. I'm using a pick uh, to hopefully pull it out in a whole piece uh, because when they break apart, the smaller bits are really stubborn to get out of the plastic nooks and crannies. Uh, just flushing it with water just wettens it and flattens it, but it doesn't really get it to break loose. One of the spots where a decal was has old decal adhesive uh, stuck on it. Even though the decal was loose, um, it's formed like this rock-hard fossilized debris on there. Uh, like it's bonded onto the plastic. Sprays to loosen it aren't really working uh, to get that spot to budge, so... I'm using some fine uh, 3000 grit sandpaper on there to buff it off and then as I kind of originally planned I'll just go over those spots more with the plastic cleaner. So going back to the instructions of where to place the decals, I'll begin to reattach them. Uh, something I ran into when researching this though, was the original decal sheets have an additional number three decal with the red field behind it. 
uh, in the blue outline. I can't find anything about uh, placement of that in the instructions, but thought I'd go ahead at least here and recreate one for this project. So the vibrance of the original uh, compared to my inkjet print isn't as strong, but I'll be putting a sealer over this, a spray sealer, and that will help boost the appearance here. So I sprayed a light coat of sealer over the original decals uh, because I've seen their print is starting to kind of flake off. So in production, uh, when the decals are made, there's a fine varnish applied to the decals uh, when they're manufactured. And that creates, over years here, this flaking and uh, like the cracks that you'll see in old decals. Um, that's just a nature of that aging, the material aging out here. And this flaking here in the print is something I'll be touching up later on, I'll show you here, using uh, acrylics, acrylic paints. So my original decals, they're all prepped and ready to go now. Uh, my reproduction one is on a fairly bright white paper compared to the vintage ones. So I'm going to be toning that down a bit um, with some pastels uh, so it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. So here's the pastels that I'm using um, and I'm going to be applying the pastel using a uh, coarse brush. So I put the pastel, work it onto the brush and then <clears throat> apply that pastel by the brush and I'll just brush it over the whole surface that way. I'm using the acrylic paints uh, to touch up those flakes and cracks in the vintage decals. I've touched up the original number three decal here, the bullseye type one, and uh, the blue step grid uh, creases in that decal. So if you want to follow along, uh, the red I used for the decal touch-up was Naphthol Crimson. Uh, there is Cerulean Blue Hue, and I mixed that with a Cobalt Blue Hue for that uh, step grid decal touch-up and just straight black for any of the black uh, that was uh, marred or missing on the decals. And I'm applying a rubber cement with a toothpick uh, behind the corners of the decals that are loose but they're still attached. And then also I'm using that as the adhesive to reapply the decals that had completely fallen off and I'll use that also for my reproduction decal.
So at this point, all the vintage decals have been given a protective spray and uh, touched up from wear and reattached. And also my reproduction number three bullseye decal is also on the toy now. So the Firebolt Space Cannon's been cleaned up, uh, given a nice uh, cleaner polish here. Battery switch terminal that's been recreated and functioning here. And uh, decals have been restored and reattached. So I've got another very cool vintage toy uh, back in full function and uh, looking great. So thanks for checking out this episode here on Toy Tinker Tim. Uh, be sure to subscribe. Show your support here for the channel and the work you're seeing. Hit the like and share this one with your fellow collectors. Also, while you're here, be sure to check out some of my other episodes for more great vintage toys and repair, restoration, tips, and ideas for your collection. Now it's time to take a look and a listen to uh, this vintage toy in its full action and glory.